what do you think of when you hear the name Reliance? Do you envision bizarre three-wheelers or sports cars? Believe it or not, Reliant was the second biggest British car company during the 70s. So how did they fall from these heights and stop car production 30 years later? This is the demise of Reliant. Reliant had humble beginnings. When Rally, a bicycle company in Britain, stopped making three-wheeled motorbikes, two employees decided that they would make their own. T.L. Williams and E.S. Thompson began making their prototype in a back garden in Tamworth, a market town in the West Midlands. Their prototype was a steel chassis van with a 600cc engine and a three-speed gearbox. They were moved to an old bus depot in Faisley, a town on the outskirts of Tamworth. The first ever Reliant was completed on the 3rd of June 1935. Later, it would get a two-cylinder engine before in 1938, Reliant would buy the rights to Austin's four-cylinder engine. During the Second World War, Reliant would make parts for the war effort, as did many other companies in Britain. After the war, they would go back to making vehicles, with the region starting production in March 1946. The Regal would be produced alongside the region from 1953, until the region was discontinued in 1956. The Regal originally used a wooden frame and 747cc engines. The Mark II was very similar apart from a new windscreen design. The Mark III would bring big change as the body was changed from aluminium to fiberglass due to the increasing price of aluminium. The Mark IV was similar and would follow in 1958 with the Mark V coming a year later. The Mark VI would be the last Regal ever with the 747cc side valve engine with the Mark VII using an, a new in-house 600cc engine. The 700cc version would follow in 1969 before the Regal was replaced in 1973. Reliance use of fiberglass didn't just stop at cars. They produced many fiberglass products for different industries. They made sinks and counters, countertops, replacement car body parts, tubes and bodies for trains and aircraft. They also made body parts for Ford Transit and Vauxhall Chevette. They also built cars for the F Turkish brand Anadol, which used some Ford parts. While well, Regal and Supervan made their headlines, Reliant were working on more conventional vehicles. The Reliant Sabre came from a collaboration with Auto Cars, an Israeli car company. Reliant developed the Sabre and made the right-hand drive version, named the Sabre. The two cars were first made as convertibles with four cylinder Ford engines with a power output of 73 horsepower. The coupe version would arrive the following year in 1962, with the Sabre 6 being introduced the same year with a new front end design. It used a 109 horsepower engine instead. The Sabre did not sell well, but it was a sign of what was to come for Reliant. In 1962, the Hodge Group, run by the businessman and entrepreneur Sir Julian Hodge, took over Reliant. They were in control for some of the company's most successful years, and these were kick-started by the release of the Scimitar. Starting with the GT, the Scimitar is one of the most recognisable Reliance ever. It used a Sabre chassis and a 2.6 litre Ford straight 6. In 1966, it would instead use a 3 litre Ford V6, with a cheaper model using a 2.5 litre version of the same engine. The GTE would replace the GT, and it had a longer chassis, new suspension, and a larger fuel tank. The Scimitar was offered with an automatic gearbox from 1970, and despite the higher price than its rivals, the GTE was a success for the brand. The new GTE, introduced in 1975, had a more luxurious focus, with a longer and wider wheelbase. The GTC was a convertible, with enough space for four people. It would use a 2.8 litre Ford V6, due to the American brand stopping production of the 3 litre engine. A hardtop model was later introduced, but Reliant struggled to sell many, due to the high price tag. The same year as the first Scimitar went into production, the Rebel would also go on sale. Made using the Regal chassis, would have a modified Regal engine to produce more torque. Using some parts from the Regal, it was well rece received, and Reliant had over 1,000 inquiries from potential customers. They could not fulfil these orders though, as they didn't have a dedicated production line, and increasing supply would reduce the number of Regals made. This was not chosen as the Regal was in demand and very profitable. The 600 was the first model and it would go on to be updated with a new interior and new suspension. The 700 had a brand new engine, had a brand new chassis and a 700cc engine. 
The 750 had a 750cc engine and a modified gearbox. It was the most successful Rebel as it had the most marketing, although production would be ended to make way for the increase in supply for the Robin. Only 2,600 Rebels were made, with estate and van versions also being offered. The lack of availability at dealers mainly hindered their sales as the demand was there, but other models were prioritised despite the Rebels seeming more in demand. In 1967 came the TW9, a three-wheel truck. It used a steel chassis and a 700cc four-cylinder engine, which produced 27 horsepower, though this was later increased to 32 with a larger engine. The TW9 was niche, but sold relatively well due to it being able to fulfill so many roles, such as flatbeds, delivery vans, and snow plows. In 1969, Reliant bought Bond cars who had gone into liquidation. In 1970, the Bond Bug was launched. It was originally intended to be a Reliance and was based on the Regal. It used a 700cc Reliant engine. The Bug was supposedly fun to drive and handled similarly to a go-kart, and it was only in production for four years, but 2,270 were made, which is surprising considering their niche nature. A four-wheeled model called the Sprint was designed in 1994, but was never put into production. In 1973, the production of Reliance's most successful model, the Robin, began. It replaced the Regal, and the Mark I used a 750cc engine, which was later upgraded to 800cc two years later. The Robin could hit motorway speed and even exceed it, and was popular due to the fuel crisis in the 1970s. The Robin would stop being produced in 1982. The Kitten was the replacement for the Rebel, and it launched in 1975, a year after Rebel production stopped. It heavily used Robin parts and was designed to look similar. It would use 850cc engine also available in the Robin. It was seen as a four-wheeled version of the famous three-wheeler, though it was received well due to its good fuel economy. Only 4,500 were sold as Reliant prioritised other models when it had problems with production. It was kept alive after 1982 in India, with Sapani building kits and selling the cars as the Dolphin in Montana. In 1977, Hodge sold Reliant to John Nash. Nash wanted cutbacks as scimitar sales were declining and new model development was cut back alongside warranties and marketing. The Rialto replaced the Robin in 1982 and had a more aerodynamic body with thicker fiberglass but used the same chassis and 850cc engine. The Rialto 2 was released the following year and it had a more economical engine. The Rialto SE became available in 1986 and for the first time the Rialto was available as a hatchback. In 1997, it would be improved with new brakes and a redesigned interior. Production would end the next year. The year after the Rialto was launched, 1983, the Fox went on sale. The fiberglass vehicle used the kitten chassis and was available as a pickup, estate, van or convertible. It was first developed by the Greek company, Meba, and they partnered with Reliant who already let them use their designs before. Reliant used the design themselves from 1983. Production ended in 1990 and an updated model was planned but never put into production. In 1984, the Scimitar SS1 was put into production. It had a chassis inspired by the Lotus Elan and a 1.3 or 1.6 Ford CVH engine. It would later use a 1.4 instead of a smaller engine and was later available for 1.8 litre turbocharged Nissan engine. 2000 a year was the intended production number but only 1,507 were made in the 10 year spell, which included some later updated models. It was around this time that Reliance fortunes would take a turn for the worse. In 1985, they lost £645,000 after tax, and they would lose nearly half a million again the next year. Nash was trying to sell the company, offering it to Lotus in 1985, and the next year to a US consortium. He would finally sell the brand in 1989 to Carl Turpin and Chris Johnson two property developers. The same year, the Robin would return with a new fiberglass body. It was available as a hatchback estate and van. It would get new brakes and an upgraded interior. New higher spec models such as the Royale and BRG would join the lineup. In 1990, it got rougher for the British brand. The new owners wanted to tap into Reliance vast knowledge of fiberglass and they also set up Reliance Marine to, to make motorised surfboards and jet skis. They also bought the Metro Cab design, but this couldn't save them as they went into receivership with debts totaling £4 million. 
Three attempts were made to buy the company, although these all fell through. In August 1991, Beans Engineering, Reliant's biggest creditor and the company that had produced engines, gearboxes and suspension for Reliant, bought the company. This decision was not made out of choice, as if Beans didn't buy Reliant, they stood little chance of survival. During this, the Scimitar SS1 was facelifted and renamed the Scimitar SST with a new body. The Scimitar Sabre began production in 1992 and was an updated SST. It would be the last Scimitar ever made. That left just the Robin and Rialto from 1995 onwards. In 1996, Jonathan Haynes took control of Reliant and set about making more luxurious versions of the Robin and Rialto, which increased sales. The Robin got its final facelift in 1999, with new body panels and headlights. In 2001, Robin production ended with the 65, which was a special edition with gold paint, leather seats, a walnut dashboard and gold plaques on the dashboard with the owner's name engraved on it. Shareholders decided to end the production of the Robin to focus on importing Ligier microcars and Piaggio apes. Haynes sold his stake and left. Production of the Robin did continue under a different name though, as b and Plastics bought the license to it. They based it on the 65, so it had all the luxurious options, but with a new interior and a revised body. The BN1 and BN2 were offered, with the two also having metallic paint, a CD player and electric windows. Only around 40 were made across 2001 and 2002, due to production problems and financial trouble. So what is left of Reliant, and is there any chance of a revival? Well, Reliant still exists under the name Reliant Parts World, although they no longer make cars. They sell genuine Reliant parts and operate from the factory where the Robin was built. It is highly unlikely that they will return to making cars, as they would need significant investment for this to happen. Their 2021 accounts show large liabilities, although they have decent cash flow and money in the bank. Their latest accounts seem to indicate that they are exempt from showing their latest earnings currently, as they are now registered as a micro-entity. In short, they will probably never return to their former glory. The demise of Reliant is a shame, but it was always likely once sales slowed. Their desire to stick to three-wheelers is admirable, but I can't help but think that if they had planned better for four-wheeled models like the Rebel, Kitten and Fox, and been able to make more and meet demand, then they may have been in a better position. Their high prices for the Robin, considering it was small and basic, also put many off as well. A combination of poor owners, questionable strategy at times, a strange mix of cars unfortunately put the nail in the coffin for this great British brand.